Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. Yep, I know it's been such a long time since I was last in here doing videos. I know, I need more content. So at the moment it's COVID-19 in New Zealand, so we're all in lockdown. So it's a perfect opportunity to do some videos. So what I've been doing the last few days um, is just going through all my footage from last year. And yes, I have been doing videoing. I just haven't been putting it together, making edits, and posting videos. Uh, so I'm going to just cover through all these vehicles, things I've been doing. You've probably seen it on Instagram, maybe, or um, my 4H Garage uh, Facebook page. And so I'm just going to make a two-piece little video catching my 2019. And you'll see this car at Auto at Samaru in one of my videos. And my car at the outside, which you haven't seen yet because I haven't posted a video, but I've got about mid last year. So some of the videos are up and down of content, like when I took the videos, some things might not line up properly, but you'll get the gist of it by watching. So hopefully you guys enjoy, crack a beer or whatever you're doing whenever you're watching this, and enjoy. So I'll start off with the GTI Corolla. As you can tell, there is no engine in it and it's all shot right apart um, it went really well in the auto at samaru in 2018 love the track went so awesome smoking quite a bit I found, especially on de-acceleration. So I did the valve stem seals inside the head, um, which is here, but that did not improve anything at all, because it's mo mainly on de-acceleration, which in my research was saying sort of vacuum through through the seals, because um, in acceleration there was no smoke. But I've stripped it all down and I've found quite a bit of oil inside the throttle bodies. Um, just on the back side and, and all in there and so it's really wet when I pulled it apart um, so I've actually done a video of pulling this down I just got to edit it all up and put it into an actual video for YouTube um, so yeah it'll still come down to the piston rings basically they're all pretty knackered and wasted um, plus the pistons they're going to need to be replaced tell by that um, so this engine's done about two it's two seven, 275,000 k's and yeah she's not too nice um, the bores actually look alright though so hopefully I can either get a rebore or um, just hone it hone it out put some bigger pistons in maybe we'll see what happens when I take the machine shop and see what they reckon um, yeah and I've hit the head apart stripped it right out been cleaning all the valves up just got a few more to go so they were like that before and yeah I've just tied them up clean them right up um, and I also need to lap them all up and everything but yeah I'll do a future video on this uh, build um, so there's not much else to say on this red car apart from it's a part and I'm working on it slowly so hopefully I can get it together sort of this year which has pretty much put me back on this project which as you can see it looks different to the last time I was walking around the car You've probably seen it in the Toyota Festival videos and um, the A8670 event I went to for its start it has different wheels as you might have noticed they are XXR002 I think that's the name of them um, 15 by 8 with zero offset um, so it's got some decent dish they were they did have a um, chrome lip on it and like a grey in centre but I did buy them new but second hand so the guy had them in storage for quite some time and he said they were in good condition but when I got them all all around in here was all peeling and all the chrome had like all webbing through it and not so good 
So yeah, I can pop a couple of pictures up and show you what they look like um, with all the webbing and they actually look quite cool with the chrome lip. But I kind of wanted to go for the dark stall colour. So this is powder coated so it's a lot stronger than the paint. Um, it'll take a few more chips before we actually chip off like normal paint will. Um, and in comparison it's quite, quite a lot cheaper too. Just kind of wanted to get it like the Watanabe style coloured wheels. Um, and I've got extended long wheel nuts. Which um, wasn't the colour I was going for but it looks alright in there. I'm also running some Michelin tyres on here. They weren't the desired um, tyre size that I was wanting. Um, they're a little bit too chunky. So these are a 60 and I was wanting a 50. Um, I was got talked into it by the tyre guy. He reckons go a size smaller in um, width. So these are 195s instead of 205s which I was wanting. But the 60s instead of 50s. Um, they actually look alright when you got the car by itself, but when you have them amongst other A86s, they kind of look quite balloonish. So once these wear out, I'll go for the smaller tyre, um, but they handy, handle really well. Went well on the track when I was going around there. Didn't sledge out or anything, or, or flick out. Let's give you a show of the back. It's quite good. So I've got the extended wheel nuts because of these long studs on the back. Because um, there's meant to be spaces on here. It's certified. Um, so that's a dumb thing too for this car. It's certified 17 inch wheels. Um, which is why some of the photos you see it's got a, the white wheels. Which I have to put on for the Warner Fitness. So it passes. Um, then pull them back off and put them on here. Because on my suit plate. Has that all written on there? Just annoying. I've also done the guards. Um, this one here has been stripped back to bare metal um, and put the appropriate filler in a couple of little areas that needed to be done. Um, I stripped it back and left a little patch in here as you'll see in the photos I'll pop up shortly in a little video um, Just so I can try and get colour It is a fraction white but um, It uh, doesn't worry me because I'm going to repaint the car at, some, at a further stage um, The only problem is of this All the whites on this did not refer to any paint code um, Like no, nothing matching to Toyota ones so we had to try and get the colour chart out and try and make one, well, pretty close to what it was. Um, so that was a bit frustrating. You would have thought the people who had painted the car previously you would have um, used it. They didn't. So yeah, this one's a really clean, clean guard. I fixed a little bit of rust in the bottom there. We added a new section. Um, I think it's in the little video that I'm going to show you shortly. This is the other guard. It was always not the tidiest of guards when I first got the car. Um, partly because you can sort of see in here where it's quite a lot wider, where it looks like it's quite thick compared to the other side. Um, it's probably because I'm a panel bead and I know that sort of stuff. But So yeah, I, I just blocked it back and got it as straight as I could. Um, it's actually come out really, really well, a lot better than I was expecting. Um, I've also fleared out um, the lip, so it could take the bigger tyres, bigger wheels, um, and it's coming really tidy too. This is the guard of my car, and I just started on the other one, just wired a new patch in. Um, somewhere here had a rusty hole, so I cut it out and made a new piece. So I'm going to take all this paint off because it's got this bog body filler in there, 
and start again. Just check the car up, so you can take a look at all that. It's pretty much straight up. There's no, no um, lip sticking out, which makes some good clearance for the wheel. Also, just cut off the corner of the bumper and the, um, the guard tab where it was there, because it started to just rub on the edge of the tire. That doesn't do that anymore. Um, so yeah, it's coming out pretty good. So basically for my flaring I just used a dolly and I put it on the edge of the lip and I used my panel hammer and just massaged the, the lip around so it was pretty much almost flat. Um, so yeah it's, it's pretty super tidy up there. Um, it's coming really well. Also replaced the springs up there with Cobra ones. It's looking a bit oily up there, but I don't know, maybe the shock's going, but um, yeah, they're, they're way better than the other ones. The other ones are cut, I think. I've got a few photos of them out, um, and they make a huge difference, massive difference compared to what I had. It's much more stiff and rigid, probably because I got the shortened shock as well. thing I've done is the headlights um, I've put the black on the top so that's actually plastic dip it's been sprayed around the top and the bottom a bit of bug splatter on there um, but there it's, it's holding it quite well gives that look of the later model headlight when it's not one thing I've done is put the alloy radiator in but this front radio support panel must have a bit of a bend in it. As you can see, there's a bit of funky stuff going on there. It was a bit wiggly, and obviously, they had a few incidents in the past. Um, so, I've had to be pretty hoary and put a cable toy on there. But she's been on that for quite a while now, and it's holding up well. Also, mounted these lights up, which I made a video on. I haven't put, put it out yet, but. Um, Shallow lights, you still can't see them from there, but if I turn them on, so I've just got a switch in the middle here. If I flip that on, as you can see, they're quite bright. Um, yeah, so that's another thing I've been doing. We've also purchased the new genuine A86 throttle cable. Um, the other one is getting, well, I don't even think it's for this particular car. Pretty crappy and sloppy. Um, it's actually quite good though, coming for the pedal piece mount underneath, and it feels so much better on the pedal, pedal feel when you foot when you're driving it. Um, so there's a good, good purchase. Um, there's not much else in here that's new, it's all looking the same. I also installed some MRP RCA, a 38mm, um, just to correct some of the suspension geometry. Um, that would work pretty awesome, and that's a huge difference, and then the wheels don't wobble over the road when you go to the bumps now. Before you'd go over a bump and the steering wheel would go sort of side to side but whereas now it's just it's good highly recommend them so you're supposed to put the thick, well, the thickness of rca in for what you'd lower at the top um and these are sort of like the bigger ones i could find for the price um and yeah they were pretty mint Another thing I acquired was a genuine um, wiring loom because this isn't the genuine wiring loom. 
does not go up under there and have all those wires like that. Um, neither does it come across like this. <laughs> but yeah, I got a genuine wiring loom from the later model um, A86. But the only problem is the plug that goes into oh, somewhere down there. The interior plug is different because it's the early model. Um, so I have to either find the loom for the dash to match it or splice and join wires to suit. I also have a new wiring loom which goes sort of from the fuse box around under the headlights panel and into the interior which also has the alternator wires on it because this one if you can see down there if it focuses um, is part of this loom which is like a front wheel drive version um, which isn't how it's supposed to be. So that can be at a later date too, but I might wait until um, when the engine's all out and I'll paint all the engine bay, I'll worry about all that sort of stuff then, because there's no point in doing all that before this in here, and then pulling it out again. Because to do that I have to pull the guards off and everything out to run all the wires properly. Um, so yeah, it's just another job on the list. But ideally I just want to get into the body and get it looking how it should. So maybe some side skirts, proper front lip. But it will come in time. We've got to do this one first. One job at a time. So that's pretty much it for this car. Um, so next I actually have a new addition, another 4AG. Um, so I'll put it on to this next video, which I made last year, I think it was around sort of June, when I acquired the car. Um, it's FXGT, with BZ Touring front on it. Right, what do we have here? Got a new machine in the driveway, that I picked up for cheap. It has a blown third gear and brake lights stay on. And needs new tyres for a while and a fitness. So this morning I've been to pick apart with a couple of friends and pulled this gearbox out to go in here. So it's 20 valve silver top. Bit rough on the bumper but that's alright. been in the interior just pulling it out trying to suss out the brake light um, it needs a clean but yeah it's got a, got a nice gauge class of TRD in it and another sort of factory looking badge I don't know if this is a TRD model if someone should try to make it like that um, it's got the funny armrest thing oh, pocket Air purifier in the back, sunroof, soundstream speakers front and back, 20 valve, twin cam TID. So, yeah, I don't know if someone's just made those up and got the stuck on or what, because I've never seen that sort of stuff before. So I still have that car, which I am selling parts for to fix this brake pedal. So, I've discovered what it was, the brakes are staying on, and up here, it's kind of hard to see, I'll move these wires. Um, up in this spot there should be like a little rubber bung thing, but it's missing, it's obviously perished, which pushes that button in. Um, so the brake lights don't stay on. So I'm going to pull the one out of the other of in and put it in here and hopefully the brake light issue is solved. This car also has an ultra racing brace behind the seat. As you can see it's, it's all filthy air still. The last person's stuff in it. That's all good. I'll clean it out make it all tidy again. So just pulled this piece out of the live-in, the A111, 
and so that was that's what it looks like this one's a little bit pierced sort of cracking it but i'm just going to glue it up and see how we get on so that basically goes between the pretzel and the little switch and it turns a lot off nice and easy